The news cycle just won't stop. I got to stop expecting it to. It's not going to stop the news cycle in college football. Coaches hirings and firings. Coaches almost leaving. And, of course, the transfer portal is humming every day. Welcome to the Voice of College Football, everyone, on a bright and cheery blue-skied, at least in the Northeast, Sunday afternoon, though extremely brisk on this February 6th, I believe. I lose track of dates, but uh, this would be the date that Josh Gaddis, offensive coordinator at Michigan, now goes to another UM, and that would be the University of Miami. We have taken to the live stream here at the Voice of College Football to get your response. And of course, I'll give my reaction to Josh Gaddis moving from the Big Ten and Michigan to Miami and the ACC. Welcome in. As always, we go live almost every day and most days, multiple times across our 25 networks. And uh, I will be saving the accolades and the thank yous for later in regards to new helmets. I guess I should have cleared these out. We were hurriedly setting up for the live stream. This is more appropriately and them and there you have it. Michigan versus Miami. It's like it's 1989 all over again or 88. Whenever that was, Jimmy Johnson's come back against Bo Schembechler. 3130 for you old timers. Okay, back to Josh Gaddis. Okay, we're going to read the article that came out, um, see if I can pick up any additional information. I'll give my take. Of course, I'm going to read your comments. We're live on the main channel, the Michigan channel, the Miami channel. Please subscribe to our channels. So basically, if you're a fan of any of the teams that we cover, 25 teams, we cover as many teams as we possibly can. But specifically on those 25 team channels, of course, Lock it in on those channels. Subscribe right there at the Voice of College Football and fill in your team. There's too many to name right now, but they include Michigan and Miami. Also, keep in mind that uh, if you just want to support the channel and help us build the network, our next priority is Notre Dame. Michigan fans, I know you don't like that. Miami fans, you don't like it that well either, but Notre Dame's the next one of a priority to get to a thousand subs. So please subscribe to our Notre Dame channel. And if it makes you feel that horrible, filthy inside Miami and Michigan fans, help me out for a few weeks, get us to a thousand. We're about 80 away. Then you can unsubscribe when we get past a thousand. How about that? We could benefit you greatly by sponsoring your business so hit me up at mark rogers tv at gmail and i will give you details on how we can partner and benefit your business here at the voice of college football now keep in mind there may be football reasons concerning this josh gaddis move from michigan michigan to miami uh, in terms of this being a move down or a lateral move, uh, it's certainly not a move up. There's no question about that. Miami fans, you can't even argue that uh, for as much as you love your, your team and there's potential for it to be a move up, that in today's status, uh, the all-time status is, of course, Michigan. And even the recent status here in the last year, certainly, but even during the Jim Harbaugh tenure of seven years, Michigan has been a much better program than Miami. That may change in the next few years, and I think Miami fans are expecting that. But for right now, at the very best, it's a lateral move, unless he's making more money or unless there are other things involved, or he just likes the situation of Miami. He likes Mario Cristobal. He likes what's going on there. Maybe he likes a little more sunny days and warm temperatures, couldn't fault him there. But uh, in addition to that, if we're just talking about a football move, and if the money's the same, this is a move down. This is decidedly a move down. Now, it may not be a move down a year from now or five years from now, but as we stand in college football right this second, Michigan 
is a top five to 10 program in the country. Miami's a top 25 to 35 program in the country. Okay. There also may be some personal situations going on out there. And uh, those are certainly rumored. I'm not going to get into speculation. Mario Cristobal's deliberate uh, methodolo methodology in putting together his first staff at the University of Miami is delivering another bold face name for a hire. Miami's finalized the deal to hire Michigan's Josh Gaddis as its new offensive coordinator. As the Wolverines offensive coordinator in 2021, Gaddis won the Broyles Award as the nation's top assistant, which is ironic because everybody was complaining about him up until 2021, uh, Michigan fans. And rightfully so. The offense was anemic in 2020. As the nation's top assistant and is regarded as one of the country's rising coaching prospects. Gaddis has already texted his players and informed them that he's leaving a source told ESPN's Tom Van Haren in a text to some Michigan players, Gaddis said, unfortunately, the past few weeks has told a different story to me about the very little appreciation I have here from administration. Okay. In life, I would never advise anyone to be where they are not wanted. Boy, I can relate to that. Not necessarily where I wasn't wanted, but in terms of appreciation and respect. <laughs> yeah, many of you can relate to that. Um, the hire of Gaddis gives Cristobal a strong coordinator pairing as he hired veteran defensive coordinator Kevin Steele away from Maryland. While he was in the process of finalizing a deal with the Terrapins last week, Steele is considered a strong tactician, etc. Let's get back to Gaddis. Gaddis proved to be one of the top coordinators and play callers in college football this season. Yes, did he did he prove that? One season, the Michigan offense was it was good. It was good. Until they played Georgia. It was good. Playing Rutgers, not so good. Playing Penn State okay. Was the Michigan offense that good? It was good. It was good. We'll stay at good. Top 25, good. Top 25, top. Top 10 to 15, good. Ohio State better, Alabama better. Mm, maybe a few other teams across the country better. Maybe five, top 10 good Michigan offense this past season. Tennessee better, maybe. Okay, Ole Miss probably. Michigan finished at number 16 in scoring offense this season, which doesn't mean a whole lot on the way to the school beating Ohio state, winning the big 10 and getting to the college football playoff in the wake of that sun kissed to Michigan season has come a flurry of uncertainty for the Wolverines, Jim Harbaugh to Minnesota Harbaugh flying to Minneapolis job. Now going to Kevin O'Connell, of course, of the Los Angeles Rams Harbaugh seeking the Vikings job. Then, of course, Mike McDonald, the defensive coordinator at Michigan, leaving to go to Baltimore. But that's and, – and we'll get to the Harbaugh, Michigan situation. And if things are coming unglued, unraveled, going off the rails, we'll address that situation. The Michigan offensive coordinator job has a front runner as quarterbacks coach Matt Weiss is considered the likely replacement for Gaddis internally. Weiss brought aspects of the Ravens' run game to Michigan this season and helped the team's offensive identity evolve during a Big Ten championship season. And I'm going to talk about the Gaddis move to Miami, how it fits Cristobal's approach. Gaddis brings Miami a wealth of experience at high-profile programs, Vanderbilt, Penn State, Alabama. Vanderbilt, Penn State, Alabama. Gaddis is senior. Season under Nick Saban as the co-offensive coordinator is 2018. Shared a sense of the Alabama model, which Cristobal has from his time there from 2013 to 16. Some of the points I was going to hit on. There we go. Gaddis just missed out on the Virginia head coaching job to Tony Elliott, the former OC at Clemson. All right. Let me get to your comments because they're, I'm sure they're stacking up here. We appreciate everybody who's on the line right now. 
So let's get to your comments first before I give you my take. Let's go through all the way to the beginning. <clears throat> Waiting to hear something about who the next OC will be for Michigan. Well, according to, and we want to cite our sources here, of course, give credit where it is due, Pete Thamel at uh, ESPN. That's the article I just read from. So Matt Weiss, possibly, that's the one name given. I, I don't have any others. I haven't given this any thought. I just found out about it like 15 minutes ago. There you go, suspense and escape. Wow, we are a recency bias in college football, aren't we? Josh Gaddis was the worst offensive coordinator in football, according to most Michigan fans following 2020. His first year was 2019, I believe. So coming off that 2018 with Alabama, in which he assisted with that prolific offense, went to Michigan in 2019. Michigan had a typical Michigan season in 2019 under Harbaugh, in which they beat all the bad teams. They did throttle a good Notre Dame team, uh, but lost to everybody good that particular season. And the offense was a juggernaut against marginal competition. Linda says, I always thought Gaddis would be looking to coach elsewhere, be it another OC or head coaching spot. Sure. Andy plays MC. Andrew Anthony says their next move is going to be huge, whatever that means. Good for them. Their next move, like he knows the coaching moves at Michigan. They're they're letting Andrew Anthony in on the coaching moves. You know, understand again. We know the football side. We know the X's and O's. We know what the productivity has been on the field for Josh Gaddis. We know the status of the Michigan program. We know the status of the Miami program. I probably upset possibly some Miami fans a few minutes ago, uh, just speaking reality. So I will get to that portion of the chat. Uh, but we, we don't know. There are many times other things going on that could possibly force a move or make it easy for somebody to move on because it's not a good situation where they are. Now, Josh Gaddis made that, he alluded to that, not receiving the kind of support or appreciation from the administration. We don't know if that's monetary. We don't know what that is. We don't know how he may have been offended by something he was left out of, something that uh, somebody, somebody looked, uh, you know, the wrong way toward it. We, we, we don't know. Michigan is screwed. Spartan Marinelli says Michigan is screwed. I love it. Ha ha ha. Go green baby. Well, we'll address that. USC's back. Yes. And his CWO tells us uh, smash the like button, please. Uh, edgy zebra is certainly happy with the Gaddis move to the U monumental for the program. Armando, so many fans were complaining. Mario took too long, then got two of the best. Yeah, he did very well. He did very well. Gaddis wins the Broyles award. I don't know who votes on the Broyles award. I would be more, respectful of that award had it been voted on by coaches but then again there's bias involved there of course but there's bias involved in any award uh, but uh, he had a great season as an offensive coordinator at Michigan he had a great season not a great tenure great season one season bad 2020 marginal Michigan Harbaugh like 2019 offensively at Michigan uh, YT Sport Sparty Sparty is that Sparty is that Sporty? That is Sparty. Michigan State fans love the Michigan State fans. And since I've been asking all of you to write in and let me know who your favorite team is, a tremendous response from Michigan State fans. So, 
Hit me up at MarkRogerTV at Gmail. Let me know what team you root for. I'm trying to get an accurate count on the main channel. On the main channel, I assume Michigan fans are on the Michigan channel. Miami fans are on the Miami channel. But on the main channel, since we talk about everybody, want to know where our fan base is, uh, how they break down. So hit me up at MarkRogerTV at Gmail. Let me know who you root for. YT Sparty. Insiders at Michigan say Harbaugh rubs people badly. Well, I think that's been said for a long time, and that's going to be even more so, I would think, considering what he, what stunt he pulled for the last four or five weeks at Michigan. There's nothing wrong with weighing your options. So let's understand that. I think people get too sensitive as fans about their coach looking at other jobs. Do you look at other jobs? Are you extremely loyal to your company to the point that you would not listen to any other offers? For 99% of you, the answer is no. You would talk to other suitors. You would, you, would, you would interview. You would hear what they have to say. You would want, you are exploring. You may be actively exploring other options. That doesn't mean you're not loyal to the company you're working for. So you can do both. However, he didn't go about it the right way. First of all, it took too long. The NFL season was over on January 9th. Jim Harbaugh took another month. Okay, don't need to take a month. It also seemed as though, based on him going through the Raiders, then the Dolphins, then the Vikings, that it basically just meant he wanted to go to the NFL and he would have taken any job. It wasn't like, wow, uh, the, the Raiders opening looks very attractive because of X, Y, and Z. And they have family ties in Las Vegas, uh, Jim Harbaugh's wife. So it wasn't as though, okay, this is a real option here and it makes sense and it's attractive these number of ways. So I'm going to try it out. I'm going to see what they have to say. And Ward Manuel, the Michigan athletic director could have said, okay, we'll give you a week to decide you, you go explore that. We respect that. Come back. Boom. But it's like, Raiders, Dolphins, Vikings, getting on a plane to Minneapolis, which either Jim Harbaugh was stupid. Either he was lacked the self-awareness to know what that looked like, or he thought he had the job. I believe he thought he had the job, whether it was because there was a miscommunication at the 12th hour at the end of the negotiation that broke it all down. Uh, but based on the Vikings interviewing another candidate that day for nine hours, it appears as though they were still in the interviewing process. If I were Jim Harbaugh, I would have told the Minnesota Vikings, I will get on a plane and come see you when I've got the job. When we seal the deal, we can do everything through Zoom and Skype. Okay. In this day and age, you don't need to go anywhere. Yes, it's better to go there and look at the facilities and all that. But um, under these circumstances, I've got a proud program at Michigan. I need to keep a certain look there. Uh, I can't be parading around the country. So I'm not going to Minneapolis, especially on national signing day. They lost a recruit. Devontae Henry out of California was a hard commit to Michigan, changed his mind, went to Oklahoma because of the Harbaugh. I'm sure just about sure because of the Harbaugh situation. Go Irish, F Michigan. This has been stated a lot in the last uh, six weeks. Joshua Alexander, it's great to be at Miami Hurricane. Andrew, you Michigan fans, would you rather have Jim Harbaugh or Mike McDonald and Josh Gaddis? An interesting way to put it. So there are situations like what we see with Jim Harbaugh losing Okay, the Josh Gaddis move does not look good. It looks like he's choosing one program over another, and it's actually a downgrade to a certain extent, as I explained a few minutes ago. The Mike McDonald move, though, he gets to be a defensive coordinator in the NFL. This is not similar to the situation in at Auburn with Brian Harson losing players and coaches, and it looks like no one wants to work there. Again, Derek Mason, their defensive coordinator, left. 
their defensive coordinator uh, left. Sorry about that. Derek Mason left uh, Auburn to take what I would consider to be generally a step down or a lateral move, generally a step down to Oklahoma State. And then their offensive coordinator was only there for a couple of weeks, Austin Davis. And then he left for whatever personal reasons or maybe he just didn't like it there. And, and Harson's in trouble. Harbaugh is not in trouble. He may have to win back some trust, but he's not in trouble. Okay. He just won a Big Ten championship. Uh, and the McDonald move is not a bad one. He's going to the NFL in a top-notch NFL franchise to be D.C. The Gaddis move doesn't look good, but again, don't be surprised. If you come across some information at some point that lends itself outside of football to fill in the blanks for us. I don't know where this collapse is out of Michigan and people that are criticizing Michigan. I, I don't see a collapse. It's not the best situation. He paraded around for five weeks looking for NFL jobs and he came back and then he makes this gung ho speech about, does it get any better than this? Does anybody have it better than us? Well, you wanted it better somewhere else, obviously. So you saw better, greener pastures out there. So what, what are you saying? Uh, I hate that line. Uh, you know, does anybody have it better than us? Well, you wanted it better. So you saw it to be better somewhere else anyway. So it, it's not a great situation in Michigan. There are fences that need to be mended relationships to be, um, to be massaged, to be cultured. Um, but it's, it's not falling apart. I will be surprised if Jim Harbaugh does not have a top 15 recruiting class in 2023. And for as much as the optics were awful about him getting on a plane to Minneapolis, and I am the first one to say this, and I've said it 50 times about him going to Minneapolis, National Signing Day was over for Michigan. Yes, they missed a possible commit that I just mentioned uh, that flipped to Oklahoma. However, 22 of the 23 were done. They were in-house. They were signed, sealed, uh, and it was the eighth best class in the country. So he has been recruiting in the 10 to 15 range, and he's going to have a top 10 to 15 class. I can almost guarantee it in 2023. So Michigan is not collapsing. They may have hit their peak, and that was the comment that I made a number of times during this Harbaugh saga is that if it's all about football, it's not about money, it's not about location, it's not about necessarily even a challenge to a certain extent or about his family and where they want to live and all those things. If it's simply about football and determining what's a better football situation, he had to determine. I don't know if he did because it just seems as though he got boxed into a corner and had to come back to Michigan but I would have been determining there are situations in the NFL that are certainly better than other situations. There are better organizations than other organizations, but you can win everywhere in the NFL. It's been proven that you can win everywhere. Everybody has been good, except to a certain extent, the Detroit Lions, and to a certain extent, the Cleveland Browns, even though they won a playoff game uh, last season. You can win. Every Jacksonville's a dumpster fire today. They were in the NFC Championship game four years ago. AFC Championship game. Okay, you can win anywhere in the NFL. College football is different. And then college football, you also have expectations versus resources and opportunity to win. And in Michigan, Jim Harbaugh, I thought, needed to determine if he was wrestling between the NFL and college football. If I maxed out Michigan... What we accomplished this year is this is the best we can do. And I really don't see myself consistently surpassing Ohio State. And based on what I saw on that Orange Bowl field, where I can get our program to the place where we can compete toe-to-toe -to -toe with Alabama and Georgia and whomever else is going to fit that uh, level at some point, Clemson, LSU, Ohio State, 
whether I can do that. Back to the Miami side of this. I know I've got Miami and Michigan folks here, of course, on the Miami side. Those are two of our strongest fan bases here at the Voice of College Football, by the way. Michigan, Miami, you are two of the best, so thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Christopher Wright, we back. Miami fans are stoked, aren't they? But this is every offseason, isn't it? But you do have a head coach that has proven that he can win. John says, did Gaddis get tired of the Harbaugh rumors to the NFL? Or does he have a South Florida connection? Not sure. Tough loss for UM. Let's also understand that I saw this reported a number of places, so I believe it to be true, that Jim Harbaugh was headed to Minneapolis. Uh, that was on Wednesday. And so the preceding weekend, he said, I'm going to be gone for a week telling his assistant this. Um, basically, you guys take the next week off. Enjoy your families. And, and there was some kind of a vague reference to kind of things are in limbo. Do what you need to do. That was a quote. Do what you need to do. I took that as get out if you need to get out. Understand that I'm probably gone, so you may be losing your job. Do what you need to do to get another job. That's what it sounded like to me. Hey, Linda. Thanks for your time today, Mark. I like hearing your take on the college football game. Go blue. <laughs> Michigan Poverty Program. So, Buckeye fan, thanks for being here as always. Michigan State clobbered Miami this year. Yes, they did in the fourth quarter. They were more capable of standing up to the heat and the humidity on that day than Miami was. Think about that. Coming from East Lansing, Michigan, where it was probably 70 degrees in September at that point, going down to Miami for 95 degrees in humidity, and they were the better, tougher team in the fourth quarter. So Mario Cristobal's got his work cut out for him. He's got a lot of talent there on that roster, but... As Brian says, uh, this is setting up as another retooling by Jim Harbaugh. Let's hope for hope he chooses well and can recreate the 21 magic. Uh, Bobby, we will place the Notre Dame helmet uh, where we need to at uh, some point, uh, wherever it is right now. But, uh, of course, Michigan and Miami get the spotlight. And we had two arrive today. Oregon. And uh, I put Texas A&M on the side. Oregon and Texas A&M arrived today. So whomever sent me the Oregon and Texas A&M helmets, Oregon courtesy Eric, Texas A&M. I don't know who sent me a Texas A&M helmet. So please identify yourself and I will give you due credit. And uh, I'm going to place the Oregon and Texas A&M helmets unless we're talking about a specific team uh, wherever you want me to for the next month at least. So thank you for that. I've never heard the analogy about um, cheating on wives and marital type relationship issues uh, more concerning the coaching uh, aspect of the game than I did this last month with Jim Harbaugh in Michigan. Bob says no big loss. You know what? I, I don't know that it's a big loss. It doesn't look good. A guy who won the Broyles Award is leaving. And not only did Gaddis leave, he left and he didn't have the typical complimentary words to say. Thank you for my time at Michigan. I had a great time. I learned so much. I grew as uh, a football coach. I appreciate everything the University of Michigan did for me. I am now seeking a, another opportunity and challenge, et cetera. No, he took a shot at the administration for not appreciating him. Again, that could be financial or otherwise. Uncle Rico's here. Good to see you, man. Jim did tell his staff to take a week off and maybe look at their options. Yes. Yes, he did. That's exactly my that's exactly the 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 first. 
thing that hit my mind when I heard that Gaddis left. Well, Harbaugh told him, you guys should be looking at your options. Anthony likes the hiring of Josh Gaddis, and the fact we took him away from Harbaugh is even better as a Dolphins fan, Mark. Dolphins, Harbaugh, John Harbaugh, are we making some kind of connection? I don't know. Harbaugh played at Chicago and Indianapolis, and uh, yeah, I don't know about the other aspect of that, but hey. Don wants to shock the world. Andy, ESPN reports, he sent a text to the players explaining he felt underappreciated. Yes. Andrew wants to hear from Steve Dace, who actually sent me a DM. I, um, I sent this link to all of our Michigan and Miami contributors uh, in case any of them want to jump on. So kind of you, Portis for President. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Mark Rogers' show is better than ESPN. And can you imagine if I had a research department and a producer and all those assistants? Goodness gracious. Any show on ESPN has like uh, 15 to 18 people working on it. And they're working all day on like a one-hour show. I just sit down here and start talking. Nashville Kane, good to see you. Yes, Andy. Yeah, a year ago, people could care less, Michigan fans, if Gaddis left. Yeah, Abdul, it could certainly be just more money. And that could be the appreciation statement made by Gaddis. Appreciation could be in the form of money. If he made seven hundred grand at Michigan and uh Miami offered him nine hundred, and Michigan was not going to increase that. Maybe he expected an increase in pay after his Broyles award. Maybe. There are certain professions, and it basically is entertainment and sports, or sports is entertainment, where these people sign contracts and then they expect, it, it makes no sense to me and it drives me crazy. You signed a contract. You signed a contract, okay? That means you were willing to work for that amount of money for that period of time. And if you did a horrible job, then the company still had to honor the contract as long as you didn't violate the contract by doing something stupid. But as long as you did the job, but even if you did a horrible job, they would either have to suffer through the contract or they would have to fire you and buy you out. So you get all that money for doing a horrible job. But if you exceed expectations, you demand and expect an increase in pay. You signed a contract. The contract is security for the work that you do. So that's part of negotiation and that's part of projection is, okay, I may give up a little upside for the security of this contract. I may be worth more than this contract in the final year of this contract, but I am giving up some potential ceiling money late to ensure the security of the contract. That's that's the deal. But in sports, there's this mentality that if I, in comparison to my peers, am worth more money than my contract, then I can just, you know, break the contract and demand more money. I'm not saying that's what Josh Gaddis did, but it kind of sounds that way that he's had a contract at Michigan. And maybe they didn't come to him and say, you won the Broyles Award. We're going to bump your salary 200 grand a year. Thank you. You're, you're amazing. And kiss his feet. They didn't lower his pay the year before after their offense sucked in 2020. Uh, Linda, it appears as though Matt Weiss is going to be the offensive coordinator. Or I should say that he's the top candidate. I don't think he's going to fill in. Well, I guess he could fill in in regards to anything that they're going to do between now and 
in the time they hire an offensive coordinator, I would think that Weiss would be the guy to be the interim, but they're just going through winter workouts right now. Yes. So um, our guy Lagartha uh, is going through some some part of the, the Gaddis fit there at Miami. Exploring with Ben's here. Good to see you. Uh, Sue says 1.6 million, the salary for Gaddis at Miami, a big jump. I don't know what he was making at Michigan. Brian Foster's not impressed with Josh Gaddis. Speed and space. Speed is waste. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exploring with Ben likes that. Andy is looking for Brian Kelly to bomb at LSU addition. By subtraction, according to Juan. Ed Rogers says Gaddis thought he was going to be the head coach. I'm sure he had preliminary talks with Michigan until Jim unceremoniously returned. Yep, that could be. G. Bama Boy says an upgrade to me. Michigan is not a great program. Cristobal is about to bring Miami back to relevance. Well, we'll see. That's why I say, G. Bama boy, this this situation may be different in a year or three years or five years. But for right now, Michigan is a better program than Miami. They're just a better football team, better program. They play in a better conference, and they've done better. So everything's better at Michigan right then. They, they even had a better recruiting class for all the things that Miami did to raise this level to number 15. And Mario Cristobal kicked ass and got after it to raise that recruiting class to number 15 in the country. Great job by him. Michigan still had a better recruiting class. Uh, okay. Says it's a move up. Again, it's not a move up. It could be a move up. Lind is excited about the change in OC. Do players leave? The players are going to leave regardless. <laughs> Some players are going to leave regardless. Only so many players can leave. And this transfer portal, it's got to settle down. It just it will settle down to a certain extent because we're going to start to get back reports and numbers and players are just going to learn about some sad, sad stories of players not finding a home and being stuck. And also they're going to come to realize that the grass is not always greener. They're going to be, there are going to be so many of these transfers that are going to go to their new team and they're going to find out, Wow, I'm the fifth cornerback here too. Or think that they had, you know, a few little issues with their position coach and their head coach at their former school and then find out, you know, the guy that I'm working for now, I really don't like. Adam says Miami could hire Nick Saban and all of a sudden Saban would be deemed no good. Uh, I believe Adam is referring to Miami detractors and critics who don't believe anything that Miami does is any good or anyone that goes to Miami. Well, that has been the case for a long, long time. 
Yes, Exploring with Ben, please hit the like button. Man, we've got uh, over 900 on the line. Appreciate everybody being here, especially since it's uh, late notice. Of course, I saw the news, prepared myself uh, for, really didn't prepare myself. All I did was uh, send out notifications to a number of people on the Michigan and Miami media side to say, hey, I would love for you to come out, come on to give your perspective. But other than that, this is why it's uh, crucial for people to um, subscribe. Subscribe to the main channel, please. Voice of College Football. Subscribe to your favorite team channel. And then if you simply want to help us grow the network of channels, then subscribe to any of them. Even if you don't like the teams, just subscribe to channels. Now, uh, once we get past 1,000 subs, then if you really don't want to be a subscriber to that particular channel, that's fine. Back off and unsubscribe. But we w would like to get, and I know I'm talking to the, the two worst fan bases to sell this, Miami and Michigan, to tell you to go subscribe to the Notre Dame channel. But we are at about 920 subs. YouTube loves 1,000 subs. They reward 1,000 subs. The algorithms explode. They start to push they, they figure your this person, this channel must be around to stay. So they start to push the content out into the traffic. So get us to a thousand subs on the Notre Dame channel in particular, although we've got Auburn, Tennessee, Texas A&M and LSU all needing to get to a thousand in Florida, Penn State, Wisconsin, North Carolina. All right. Virginia Tech, West Virginia. Thank you for that, Bird Stone. Uh, Adam really likes the Kevin Steele. Steele from Maryland. He was in the midst of uh, re-signing his contract, re-upping there. Justin bringing Tom Herman as the Michigan OC. Good thought. I like it. Michigan believes they've got a ward manual problem. Well, you certainly did with the Harbaugh situation. He should have had enough pride and self-respect and dignity for the university to say, again, we're going to cooperate with you. We're not going to say just because you're out looking at NFL jobs, you're fired. We're done with you. We understand. You want to explore some options. You got two weeks, two weeks. We can't have this a fiasco for five weeks, two weeks. That gets us a decision by national signing day. Although that may have worked in Michigan's favor, because if you think about it, had Harbaugh left in two weeks, let's say January 20th, with National Signing Day just a few weeks prior to that, or just a few weeks after that, they may not have secured the entire class. Although I believe 22 of those 23 signings were back from the December signing period. So that might have been fine. And then, of course, those players would have waited to see who they hired. It's fun to bring two different fan bases together like we have today with the Michigan fans and the Miami fans. They don't interact very often. It's not like bringing together Ohio State and Michigan fans or Miami and Florida State fans, for example. So, Uncle Rico's got some juicy information. I'm not going to post it on the screen there because we cannot verify it. So basically everything I post to the screen, I try to get to as many comments as possible and post them to the screen, even if it's for 15 or 20 seconds. Uh, so everybody can be on as much as possible and try to read through as many comments as possible, unless you guys are having your own private conversations or if something's stated that's not relevant to what we're talking about. That said... That said, if somebody brings a rumor to the surface, well, I'm not going to post that comment. That doesn't mean it's not legit in terms of it being factual or can't be discussed, of course.
Yeah, so as Dennis states here, Gad has talked about this opportunity with Harbaugh before accepting it. It appears that he's taking the Miami OC position with Harbaugh's blessing. Harbaugh, it seems more and more like he thought he was gone. Mike, 3883, video idea. Best underrated season ticket deals. Pitt, for example. I don't know who's going to watch that. I certainly wouldn't watch it. I could care less who's got ticket deals. And I don't know where the ticket deals are. And I got to do research to figure out ticket deals. So, yeah, Pitt's got to be cheap. I heard somebody stated the other day on our West Virginia show with Golden Blue Dude, Travis Kenobi, Coos Walker, join us on the West Virginia show every Friday night, that um, you could get pit season tickets for like 300 bucks. So seven games, 300 bucks, that's 35 bucks a game, whatever it is. Tony wants some sage steel here. Um, I was fortunate enough to uh, have a few words with sage steel from time to time at ESPN. She's a very charming and beautiful woman and very knowledgeable and insightful and very intelligent. And of course, a tremendous communicator, of course. Uh, sage steel to talk some uh, college football. She's a graduate of uh, Indiana University. One scoop, John. Good to see you. So I'm glad that the Miami fans are generally happy. I don't see any Miami fans that aren't happy. That's great. I love it. You're happy. You got an offensive coordinator and he just won the Broyles award. And I even see that most Michigan fans could care less. They think, you know what? 2021 was good, but there's all sorts of offensive coordinators that can do the same thing. And our offense was marginal to be kind before that. So not a huge loss. I think it's a significant loss. I don't think it can't be replaced and not by one guy in the country or three guys. There's there's 25 guys out there at least that can do the job of the Josh Gaddis. I don't know if they're available I do think that Josh Gaddis, based on his time at Alabama, Mario Cristobal's time at Alabama, but more so what Mario Cristobal is all about as an offensive coach. He's all about offensive line, running the ball, power running, complementary speed, obviously. Well, look at what Josh Gaddis coached at Michigan. One of the more impressive narratives on the field that I saw this season in college football was that Michigan, which seemed in disarray the two previous years offensively, or not in disarray, to have conflicting styles and not to be able to find an answer for what the direction was, that it was Harbaugh with Tight ends and fullbacks, eye formation, run the ball, play action. Let's be a traditional 1995-style college football or NFL offense. His foundation conflicting with Josh Gaddis coming in and somehow Harbaugh thinking, I'm going to hire this guy to upgrade our offense, but I still want to impose what we do on him, and it didn't work. And I don't know what they were doing. This season in 2021, and this is probably the Miami offense of the future, we saw Michigan, I thought this was extremely effective, keep its identity. Hassan Haskins was a brute. Blake Corum complimented him. Michigan was still a run first team. Offensive line, running game, first and foremost. That's what Mario Cristobal wants. Miami fans, you may not like that. I know you I know you're happy about Cristobal being the head coach, but you may not necessarily like 
that he's offensive line running game guy, that doesn't mean you're going to throw eight passes a game. That just means that he wants to establish a running game first and foremost. Well, Josh Gaddis, regardless of what his past was with Alabama and elsewhere at Michigan, he somehow made it work where he was able to mold Jim Harbaugh's concepts and, and allow that to be the foundation of the offense, just like Mario Cristobal's, his, his bread and butter, similar to Harbaugh's. And then Josh Gaddis was able to work in the, um, the dynamic abilities of Blake Horm and Donovan Edwards, Andrew Anthony, and they threw the ball effectively. They started slow in the passing game early in the season, but they unpeeled it like an onion. You got to see more and more levels of concepts and sets and formations and just flat out calling more passing plays, starting basically with the Wisconsin game. It was the first time that uh, Cade McNamara opened it up. I think that was out of necessity because of Wisconsin's run defense being arguably the best in the country, probably second best. And uh, Michigan's offense flourished as still this identity of smash mouth, tough football. Look at the Ohio State game in particular. They didn't have to get away from that because they just pounded Ohio State into oblivion. A pathetic defensive performance. But they added concepts onto that and wrinkles and were creative at the same time. That was impressive. I'll give Josh... Gaddis credit there. And I think he learned some from Harbaugh. Let's give Jimbo a little credit too. Super chats. Let, let's get to those uh, because if I just read every comment, we're never going to get anywhere, especially when I stop every three and give my own opinion. Uh, Armando says, do you think the offense line or the offense will be better with TBD over Cade? Yes, yes, and Yes. And why don't we tack on another yes. Tyler Van Dyke is a better talent with a better arm and and not just a better arm in terms of arm strength, but passing ability, uh, passing talent, arm talent over McNamara. Yes. Let us not miss these super chats. We always have to honor the super chats. Where's the next one? Again, we're talking uh, Josh Gaddis from Michigan to Miami here at the Voice of College Football. Appreciate everybody being here with about 900 on the line. Here we go uh, with... Um, Finns fan 23. UM has one championship since the 40s. Miami has five. Yeah. Is that... Was that for the benefit of whom? Yes, you're right. National championships. Yes. Michigan has a better winning percentage. They've won more. They've certainly won more conference championships and have played better competition most of the time. Not every season, all the time. Most of the time have played better competition. And I'm talking about right now. I'm not talking about what Miami accomplished 21 years ago. I'm talking about the status of the programs right now. Right this second, Michigan's better. I said Michigan was better. I remember last offseason, and I took a beating from Miami fans because of Michigan going two and four. That big six-game season, I said, no, Michigan's got better recruiting classes. they got better players. They play in a better conference. Harbaugh's a better coach than Manny Diaz. It's not even close. Michigan's better than Miami. Well, what did we just see this last season? Michigan was much better than Miami. Will that continue? We don't know. Bigger shelf. Need a new set, Rico. We're going to go with a new set at some point. But I'm I'm the guy that can 
look at different kitchens and bathrooms and I can tell you what I like, but to be able to do it myself, it's the same thing with a set. I could tell you what I like, but for me to do it myself from scratch, forget it. All right, next up. Next up. U-Town. Mario is building something special in Miami. Moving to the beat of his own drum, OCDC, I'm excited what this team will look like in the fall. And you should be. You should be. Miami, with all of its issues, and most of them administrative and coaching. <laughs> Miami's most, most, not that Miami is recruited and fielded the kind of rosters that they did between 19. 83 and 01 for the most part they haven't there's been a significant drop off in talent but still Miami has had the talent for the last 15 years to not be winning 60% of its games Miami doesn't even have a 60% winning percentage in the last 15 years but they should have had a 75% winning percentage Miami should have been going 9 and 3 most of the last 15 years not winning 55% of its games having basically Miami has been a seven and five team for almost 20 years. That's what they, if you average everything out, they've been a seven and five team. That's what they are. A seven and five program until proven. Otherwise they have been a seven and five program. And even with the screw ups of the administration and the, the coaching hires have been deplorable, awful, Worst in the country. You know how I know? Take Mark Richt, put him aside. Different category, different case. Other circumstances involved. Mark Richt, quality higher. He'll be in the College Football Hall of Fame. He accomplished tons at Georgia. And had there been a playoff when he was at Georgia, he would have been in the playoff three or four times. Okay. Mark Rick decide because that didn't work for a few different reasons that were somewhat football related, some not. Okay, put Rick decide ever since Butch Davis left Miami. Every head coach at the University of Miami until Cristobal. Before that, Coker, Shannon, Golden, Diaz. Who did I miss? Nobody, right? What can we say about all of them? And I don't know that we can say this about any other decent program in the country. All of those coaches have one thing in common. None of them achieved anything before they got to Miami as a head coach. None of them achieved anything after they left Miami as a head coach. Nothing. 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 You can't say that about any other decent program in college football. You can't say that. So the hiring has been awful for the head coach. Now they've got a real head coach. Okay. I'm not going to promote Manny or Mario Cristobal as the second coming of fill in the blank. Nick Saban's the easiest one to, to grab, but Pete Carroll or Urban Meyer or Bo Schembechler or whomever. A great all-time coach, Bobby Bowden. I'll hurt some Miami fans by throwing Bowden in there. I, I'm not going to promote Mario Cristobal to be that. We don't know. He might be. We do know that he's capable. He took over an Oregon program that was decent. It's okay. They went 7-6 and six the year before he got there. They were 4-8 and eight the year before that. They hadn't been that good for a couple of years following that national championship game run in 14. So in 15, 16, 17, they were okay. Well, they go like four and eight, nine and four, seven and six. Anyway, he upgraded them significantly, decidedly. Three Pac-12 championship games, two championships, Rose Bowl win, 
was he perfect? Were they world beaters? Did they get to the playoff? And no, but it, much better. Upgraded the recruiting, upgraded the performance on the field. Really, the only alarming aspect of Mario Cristobal's tenure at Oregon was this two-game sample against Utah this past season. Anybody can get run out of a building at any point for the most part, unless your name's Alabama or Georgia. You can get run out of the building, and that happened against Utah. But not to have the fight, the determination, or the game plan, scheme, strategy to counteract what you did two or three weeks earlier and get blown out by all the game. It looked like the same game <laughs> looked like they were playing the same game. And when does this happen between two good teams in the NFL or in college football, where, where you take two teams that are by all accounts, Utah and Oregon last year were comparable. You take any other common opponent and certainly Oregon went out and took care of Ohio state and Utah could not. Anyway, they were comparable teams and maybe a bad matchup for Oregon, but you were playing for the Pac-12 championship and you just got, even just based on pride, you got obliterated by these same guys two or three weeks ago. You don't have enough pride. You didn't, your head coach wasn't able to inspire the team to the point. That's a bit, I don't want to overplay that as being this red flag because I don't think it is, but it's, it's not a good coaching look. All right. Super chat coming in. Let me get to the next one. Kyle Pickett. Kyle, we appreciate you so much. Hang on just a second. Kyle, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for the contribution. You know, you're my guy. I appreciate you being here. Why hasn't uh, Mark gotten other Super Chats? He's the voice of college football. Come on, chat. Kyle, thank you for the encouragement. Thank you so much for your contribution, everything that you do. Appreciate you so much. Oh, uh, yeah. One scoop, John. I wonder what Andrell knows. Tom Brady as analyst. Tom Brady. If Tom Brady, um, Maybe if he's thinking, you know what, I'm going to be a little bit bored during football season and I love breaking down game tape and looking at schemes and that sort of thing. And I'm going to be a little bit bored until I figure out what I'm going to do next. Maybe these people that want Tom Brady to be the head coach at Michigan. <laughs> are you kidding me? His life's way too good to want that mess. And I'm not talking about Michigan being a mess. I'm talking about any college job. Why would you want to deal with NIL and transfer portal and recruiting? Recruiting's got to be just brutal. They couldn't pay me enough money. They could not pay me enough money to be a college football coach and have to recruit. They couldn't. Could not happen. I am telling you that if I was offered $9 million to be the head coach at blank university, LSU, Alabama, wherever, I would probably take the 9 million. I would be the coach for one year and then I would quit say, no, I made my 9 million. I can invest this and I can be fine uh, for the rest of my life. And no, I'm not going to be out there recruiting anymore. Nope. No, thanks. <laughs> Recruiting's got to be, to be chasing around a bunch of 17-year-olds? Oh, my word. Dennis, your opinion that Harbaugh should have been given an ultimatum is horrible, just like most of your other takes. Still, I'll support you saying, <laughs> Dennis, this, this guy is tremendous. So Dennis criticizes about everything that comes out of my mouth or any video that I produce, but he's always here. So do I care? No. So... Love me or hate me, J 
just be here. <laughs> Dennis. Dennis, um, I don't know if he's a big JFK fan supporter, but he's got that fine um, shot of Lee Harvey Oswald. I know I don't know if uh, maybe Dennis is a conspiracy theorist or what the deal is, but uh, he, he's either a JFK fan or I, I don't know what the, his his motivation is there. But it's 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 funny. It is quite amusing. We got uh, the truth here. Now, if you can get the truth, uh, look up the movie Live a Little, Love a Little. And you got Elvis Presley walking into ad agencies and he basically gets his self uh, job interviews by just basically saying, hey, um, this is Nolan. I'm here with the truth. So if you can lay down the truth, then you're you're a hot commodity. Miami is making a difference in big time coaching. Yeah, they're forming a tremendous staff. Yeah, I would agree. D coordinator, Kevin Steele, OC, Josh Gaddis. That's a formidable duo. Kevin Smith, I thought was a good running back uh, coach addition. Absolutely. Thank you, the truth. I love that name. Exploring with Ben. Thumbs up, everyone. Thank you so much for that, Ben. Especially for the sexy ducks helmet, courtesy of Eric. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that tremendous? This is, um, on this day, this is um, to commemorate Mario Cristobal's move from Miami to Oregon. So we will keep uh, Oregon there. Probably just have the, the Miami and Michigan helmets there. See, they're, they're dueling. But I guess they didn't duel, did they? It's a, it's a Miami slam dunk getting Gaddis. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate that so much. Uh, we are trying to determine the various portions of our viewers and what fan bases you root for, what fan bases you belong to, what teams you root for. So please hit me up at Mark Rogers TV at Gmail, Mark Rogers TV at Gmail, and let me know who you root for. And you can also give me your little story. A lot of people have written in and told me how they became a college football fan or gave me some kind of story about what stadiums they've been to or whatever. And other people have also uh, let me know how long you've been watching. It it surprises me. Uh, we had a few people write in yesterday and say, I just started watching today. Just started today. Just came across your channel, came across your live stream. Loved it. Good football talk. I just hung out, and this is day one. Remember a USC fan saying that in particular. So thank you for that. Uh, exploring with Ben. Appreciate that. Look at Kyle. Kyle says, uh, Mark, money won't make you happy, but it does buy. Yep. That is a true statement right there. Money can make your life more convenient. It could make it more comfortable. Can't make you happy. No, can't make you happy. Although, well, I'll say, you know what? If we want to be technical about it, it can make you happy if you're searching for happiness, not joy. Joy is internal. Joy is consistent. Joy is being fulfilled. And joy is like being happy all the time. Not that you're not down or you can't grieve over something or have a down day, but you're internally joyful. Happy comes from the word happenstance. It's based on circumstances. My dog died today. I'm not happy. Um, I just got a raise. I'm happy the next day. Uh, whatever. I got some new clothes. I'm happy. Uh, my wife left me. I'm not happy. <laughs> you know, it's, it's based on happenings. That's where the term comes from, based on happenstance, whether you're happy. So we all get happy and unhappy. That's perfectly normal. The uh, real test is to be able to achieve joy in life. Kyle, thank you so much for that. Much appreciated. Uh, next up, we've got... 
Tehran. Nothing to see here, people. Yesterday, Josh Gaddis was UM offensive coordinator, and today he's still the OC. Yeah, still UM OC. That is still the job title for Josh Gaddis. Tehran, thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate that so much. Well, I believe Bilal says Josh Gaddis lost in space. No, he's got himself a job. He's got himself a job. Uh, we're going to have more on this. There's no question about that. Just keep in mind that on Wednesday, we do our Miami show at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Every Wednesday on the Miami channel with uh, Cam Underwood, State of the U. And then also the wholesome one in our second Miami edition, Miami Live, every Thursday at 8 Eastern, Michigan Live. Michigan fans at 5 o'clock Eastern on the Michigan channel. So some people just watch the main channel, don't necessarily realize that we've got team channels all over the place with team-specific live streams. Ohio State, Michigan, Iowa, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Florida State, Miami, West Virginia, all have specific shows, weekly live streams. On Tuesday, it's Iowa and Nebraska. On Wednesday, it's Oklahoma, Ohio State, Michigan, Florida State, and Miami. Thursday, it's Miami again. And some people complain and say, Mark, why do you have two Miami shows each week? That's because Cam's awesome and the wholesome one is awesome. And because... We've got enough traffic and enough views and enough support to have two Miami shows every week. And then we've got a West Virginia show we've done for the last eight weeks on Friday. Uh, appreciate that so much, Jeff. Thank you so much for the thumbs up. And I know that there were tons of other great comments in there that I didn't get to and people who are so supportive and encourage other people to hit the like button, which is that is key as well. Please hit the like button. That helps out the uh, YouTube alg algorithm as well. Algorithm, algorithm as well. And also, you know, get some other people in, in the um, live chat. So let people know that, uh, you know, on social media, I'm sure you've got like 500 Facebook friends or 500 people that follow you on Twitter or 42 people that follow you on Twitter or three people that follow you on Twitter, whatever it is or on Facebook and all these other social media platforms, Instagram and others that I'm not aware of, uh, please let me know that we're here talking college football all the time. And we're going to do more on Josh Gaddis from Michigan to Miami and what the Wolverines need to do to replace McDonald and now Gaddis. And is Jim Harbaugh losing the program? I think not. Not losing the program, but it's not been a good Six weeks for Michigan football, starting with the New Year's Eve demolition by Georgia. Neil, thank you so much for the Super Chat contribution. Appreciate that so much. Excited for Nevada and all the former assistants of Coach Alt that have come home to build the program up again. Interesting comment there about Coach Alt uh, of Nevada. Very cool. Neil Campbell, thank you so much for the contribution. Appreciate that so much. And Neil and others, if you have not hit me up at Mark Rogers TV at Gmail, please let me know who you root for. I want to get an accurate count. I've had about maybe about 100 people so far write me and let me know who they root for, how long they've been watching. So hit me up, Mark Rogers TV at Gmail. Let me know who you root for and how long you've been watching here. And if you want to tell me anything else, great. I love to hear it here at the Voice of College Football. Next live is definitely Tuesday, Iowa Channel, Nebraska Channel, Hawkeyes live at 5.30 Eastern, Huskers live at 7 Eastern. Who knows, maybe we'll go live on Monday. We certainly have had enough support here talking Miami and Michigan football with, with the Josh Gaddis move. We've we've talked recently about Jimbo Fisher's little tirade against Lane Kiffin and certainly talked about um, Brian Harson's issues at Auburn. And otherwise, here at the Voice of College Football, I've got so many content ideas that will be coming out here in the next few weeks. So hang tight. We're going to get you to spring practice in good shape. 
with all these teams. We're going to preview all of them, position units across the board, and all of it. Kyle says, uh, Mark, what do you think that if we were to bring back the computer to replace the biased committee, would that playoff be better? Yes. Uh, computer, the, are you talking about the BCS formula? We don't need a computer. Um, so we did a live stream last off season and I ran down my playoff formula and I'm okay doing it a few different ways. Eight teams, 16 teams, the 12 team proposal that was brought to the public's attention last summer. I liked everything about it except one thing, the number of teams, not because it was 12, 12 would be fine. But 12 cannot fit into a format without buys. And I've explained to everybody, and since I've got a pretty good crowd here, I'll explain it one more time. Buys do not work in college football for this simple reason. Buys work in the NFL. I don't even like them that much in the NFL, but at least they work. They can be judged and evaluated fairly. So if the Kansas City Chiefs are 13-3, and three, or now with the 17-game season, 14-3, and three, and the Pittsburgh Steelers are 11 and six. Well, they play like schedules and their schedules almost overlap. Probably 12 out of those 17 games are against the same exact teams. So you can fairly and justify, you can justly award a buy in the NFL from one team to the next because the schedules are so similar and they probably even played that year. Okay. In college football, think about the unfairness of a buy. If we get this 12 team playoff proposal as it was proposed and announced last summer, this is what I like about it. Conference champions are in conference champions are the only ones that receive buys. I would love on campus sites for the first round that would deter teams from sandbagging games late in the season. I can't think of the term. What term am I looking for? Intentionally losing games. There's a term. Intentionally losing games late in the season because if you intentionally lose games late in the season, you're not going to win a conference championship and you're going to have to travel. You're going to have to play an extra game. You're going to have to travel. Anyway, what I don't like about the buys in college football is the schedules are so different and the teams are so different that we cannot fairly compare them. And this is how much of an advantage a buy is in college football. Okay, let's say it's December 5th and we just played the conference championship games. The committee comes out the next day and tells us these are the 12 teams. These are the four that receive buys. So first and foremost, they have to make a decision between seed number four and seed number five. And I guarantee that will be razor close, if not between three, four, and five, or three, four, five, and six, but especially between four and five, they're going to have to make a determination that is not going to be fair. I will be able to sit here and give you a justification for five being four and four being five. But the difference between that seeding, unlike all the other seeds in the bracket, is going to be enormous because seed number four is going to have a bye week. Seed number five is going to have to go play the 12th best team in the country. Okay. In week one. So think about this. So this is the first week. It's December. We get our 12 team playoff format and the top four seeds get buys. Everybody else has to play five versus 12, six, 11, seven, 10, eight, nine. Okay. If you're the five seed, let's say you are the five seed, you're Oklahoma. The four seed was Ohio State. The five seed was Oklahoma. And the 12 seed is Penn State. Okay. Oklahoma's going to have to play Penn State while Ohio State gets to sit. Okay. Disadvantage number one is that the team is the most obvious advantage of a buy is you risk. You have no risk in losing. That is advantage number one is the most obvious. You have no risk of losing. While the other team has a 50% chance that they're going to lose and get knocked out. You have an automatic win given to you as the team that receives the buy. 
So that's point number one, the most obvious. But beyond that, I don't hear these things talked about. Point number two is that there is a chance, Jameson Williams, John Mechie, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that you have a key player get hurt or two or three get knocked out of that first playoff game that you will not have available for the next playoff game. So the team that receives the bye has no risk of injury, none, zero. The team that plays has risk of injury and having players get knocked out of the second playoff game. Reason number three that buys don't work in college football is that even if you don't have anyone get hurt to the extent that they're going to miss the second game, you're going to have your team get beat up. They're going to have to play a quality team, a tough game, a very intense game, and they're going to get beat up. So your team's going to be compromised physically. That's point number three. And then point number four, especially not talked about. Imagine in this scenario, the playoff selected the first weekend of December. The first round, let's say, is played two weeks later and the second round three weeks later. Okay. Ohio State, being the four seed in this scenario, is going to have three weeks to sit and game plan for Oklahoma and Penn State. Oklahoma and Penn State don't have that luxury. They got to game plan for each other. They can't assume we're going to win so we can game plan for Ohio State on Fridays or whatever. No, they got to be laser focused on each other. That's going to be a tough enough game. So Oklahoma and Penn State have to be laser focused on each other and game planning only for their opponent, Penn State, Oklahoma. Ohio State can sit for three weeks and split its time between Penn State and Oklahoma and game plan. And then think about this. Once that game is played, Ohio State gets to sit and watch. They get the best game film of anyone because they get to sit and watch Oklahoma and Penn State play. So they get a fresh game tape. And then they get to play them one week later. Buys do not work in college football. They are not fair. All right. That's my uh, soapbox on buys in college football. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, appreciate everybody being here, 900 plus strong uh, for most of the time here, talking Josh Gaddis, Michigan to Miami. We will talk it up big this week uh, right here on the Voice of College Football. See you soon. Appreciate the support. You guys are the best. Uh, Bilal, I am going to read your comment because I think it's um, – Worthy. So, so yes, there are some benefits to playing. Mark, sometimes playing a game also helps the team become more focused and more uh, work on some issues they may have. Well, if you've got issues after 14 games of playing football, but I understand what you're saying, and there is some value to what you're saying. Certainly, it's not a 100% to zero, but it's about a 95 to 5 um, advantage. See you soon. Keep it locked in. Subscribe. Hit the bell for the notifications to know when we go live. We will probably be live sometime on Monday, and I'll be churning out content right here at the Voice of College Football.